welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another sketchbook tour video. I've done a few sketchbook flip throughs on my channel and if you've seen any of those before you'll know that I tend to do it in half. This is a Royal Talons A4 sketchbook and there are quite a lot of sheets in these so I tend to split it in half just so that the video isn't super long. So I haven't finished this sketchbook yet but I am well over halfway now though it has taken me quite a while to get to this point. This is the first sketchbook flip that I've done on this channel with an A4 sketchbook because I usually work in these smaller versions. These are the 13 by 21 centimeters. This one is 21 by 30. So it's a lot bigger and I tend to just reach for these ones a lot more, which is why I fill these a lot quicker. So it has taken me a while to fill this one and obviously I'm still not there yet, but I'm definitely leaning more towards this one at the moment just because I'm trying to explore more texture and working bigger. But it does mean that I started this sketchbook way back in 2020. And this is the first piece that I did in here. And it's also actually the very first time I used Neocolor 2 pastels. So you can see those up in the top corner and this was a birthday present for Mitch so I hadn't used Neocolor 2s before this point. And it's so funny to me because I remember painting this and I used gouache and coloured pencil and Neocolor on top. But I can really see how sort of tentative I was with the Neocolors because I hadn't used them before. And also that I use purples, which is a colour that I very rarely use. And in my tin, I can see that those have been the ones that I don't reach for because they're still a little bit sharp. Whereas the ones that I do reach for all the time look like this now. So it's quite interesting to me that back then I was using colours I wasn't sure on because I was still sort of building my style and I was still experimenting a lot. I didn't create as often back then as I do now. I was still a full-time designer so I was doing my painting and things in the evenings and on the weekends and it wasn't until I did my daily art challenges that I really sort of found my style and worked out what I enjoyed the most. So this one was done on the 12th of July 2020. I feel like this is quite a good representation of how I used to use sketchbooks. Um, generally now I do quite finished art because I find that I work a lot quicker. But back then when I wasn't creating as often, this was how I used to film my spreads. I've got some people sketches here just in graphite and some, I think this is watercolour or gouache and I was just playing without sketching first. But there's a lot of blank space and it's definitely very different to how I use my sketchbooks now. Again, more experiments. This was going to be filled and then I was going to peel the washi tape off to keep that really clean edge, but I didn't finish this one. This is really realistic for me and was done with Prismacolor pencils. And then this one, I've still really liked this. This was an experiment again with my Caran Dash Neocolor 2s. So these are definitely my some of my favourite colours and some gouache which I was using quite muted back then and I also included this bit of brown paper collar. I really like this composition. Then we have this spread which I still really like. I've gone back through some of my photos when I went to New York in 2017 and filled this spread which is like a collage of different views using my photos. I was still using pencil and like graphite lines which I really don't do much line work now and when I do it's on top of a gouache layer whereas here I did the lines first and coloured in. But I still really like the style of this one and I can still see how I was like working my way up and practicing because I wasn't super confident back then and I feel like I can see that with the paintwork. Now this was done in August 2020 and I did film this one, it's one of the very early videos on my YouTube channel so I will link that up above. Again I don't really do this work anymore but I still really like it. This was done with black ink and a dip pen which again I often don't use now. And I also coloured in some of the mushrooms and fungi with this red neocolor so again I was kind of using the neocolors to colour in things rather than the finishing details layer. But I still really enjoy drawing birds and I definitely like this style, it's still something that really interests me, I just don't prioritise it anymore. Some more doodles, this was when I was trying to brainstorm some Christmas card ideas and I think this was just for a graphic about my shop opening on Etsy at the time. This is just done with a Micron fineliner which I never use anymore. 
Okay, and then this is a flip forward. I think this was 2021 because this is for my Folktail Week work. I'm not sure what changed from this to this, but I can see that I'm a lot more confident with my Neo colours. I also used acrylic paint here for the really textured line work here. And it was when I was really starting to blend the Neo colours and use them just on their own. So like you can see here where I've blended it together but still used them dry. Again, I've got a video all about Neo colours on my channel, so I will link that up in the cards. But this one makes me laugh because this was like my prep for the Folktale Week work, which is a challenge on Instagram. And this was probably the most liked one out of all of the pieces that I did for Folktale Week, and it was just like the preparatory sketches. So I was just playing with colours and the landscape here. And then this is the first spread. I did my Folktale Week work based on the story of Momotaro, which is a boy that's born from a peach and is a Japanese folklore tale. I can see I was using acrylic paint. Here's where the neo colours were coming in. It's still, it's quite whimsical and I really like the way I did the sky. You'll see that come in a bit later. But I was pretty pleased with this and I was planning on adding text here if it was like a real story. But I can see I was interested in kidlit illustration at this point. And then this was the peach coming down the river. I still really like this work. It doesn't feel very me now, but it's still very playful and I really love the colours. Even back then I was adding a bit of pink to my work, although this is the rose colour of the Neo colour rather than the salmon pink I use now. I also started putting people in my work, which you'll see in this spread as well. This was when Momotaro was born. This is This was at the time a spread which I was quite unsure of because I didn't draw people much and I still don't like it now. I think I don't like the dark brown here and I don't like this but the idea of this one was to post every day on Instagram and so I'd had a lot of I put a lot of pressure on myself to create every day and a full spread like this was quite a big undertaking. The next one this is a portrait one which I won't be able to fit that way on the screen but I don't often do food illustration so this was different for me again. The whole background was done with Neo colours, so I was just blending them together as they were dry. And then behind some of the noodles and these dango are, I think it's squash. And then again, I used coloured pencils to layer up some of the textures. And this is just quite a playful one. It feels very graphic. Another spread that was out of my comfort zone because I was drawing animals. Again, we've got Mama Taro, he's grown up now. And there were these animals in the story that followed him on his adventure. I quite like this spread. It's very playful. I, I quite like this white details to show like magic. Um, but it still does, it does still feel very different for me. This was my least favourite spread from the Folktale Week work I did. This was when Momotaro and his gang were going over to the mountain to fight the monster. And there's not much storytelling in this spread really. So. Not my favourite and I don't really like how I did the water here. I much prefer the river which I tried to tie through all of the spreads. And then this was the final one which I feel like it was a bit of a cop out because I didn't do the final party of him coming back home to his village having slain the beast. But I really love this one and this was the first ever Patreon exclusive print that I did for my patrons. So it has a really nice feeling to me. And I remember being super pleased with the sky, of adding in these different tones. Again, I'm using purples, which I don't do very often. And this was also one of the first videos that I filmed a time lapse for, for my Patreon. So, Felt Toe Week is over now, and I think I had started the daily challenge at this point, so I did that for a year. I don't really like this. This was done with dip pen again, but with brown ink, and I just, I think I preferred it before I added in all the colour. I feel like this one was quite rushed and I don't really like the end result. This was a, an experiment using a view on Google Maps which I really liked. This was done with gouache and some brush pens I think. It's quite loose which I like and I can actually see I've got a magenta pop of pink here which is quite interesting. I find it's always really interesting looking back through sketchbooks and seeing how things connect. A spread where I changed the colours, so I tried to alter the colours from the Google Maps view I was drawing to be a lot more vibrant and vivid. I do like the combination of the purple and the orange. It's really interesting to me how much purple I actually used back then. And then 
At this point of the daily art challenge, I'd been doing it for about six months and I felt really stunted. And I remember around New Year that I really wanted to try and experiment more. And this was the first spread doing that. I wanted to try loads of different ways to draw tigers. Some are definitely better than others, but I remember just playing and having fun. And that point in my daily art challenge was a real turning point for me moving forward of why I was doing this art challenge and what I wanted from it because I definitely got stuck in the habit of trying to create work that I thought I should be doing rather than following what excited me. A lot of the work from that daily art challenge is in my smaller sketchbooks as well, but sometimes I did reach for this larger A4 one. Another experimental one, this was the 7th of January, so we're in the new year now, in 2022. Again, I was still experimenting with the collage and just trying different techniques. And this one was just fun. I feel like I should do more spreads like this. This is a blank spread just where I taped in this reference from a magazine, which I had planned on painting here, but never got around to. This one was when I went to the lakes, I took my sketchbook with me. This is actually the exact same view that I drew in my recent vlog in the plein air drawing daily vlog that I filmed recently. This is the exact view, but obviously this was in January, so it was a lot greyer. And I really was trying to get in a lot of the energy, which I do like. I like how simple this is. Um, but I do know that I also did a smaller version in my A5 sketchbook. So I worked in that one and this one at the same time, which was the first time I'd done that outside. I really love this spread. This was done on an Emma Carlyle Patreon session where we were just painting seals. I really love the texture here. I feel like I'd sort of found my groove with gouache here. I love how thick some of it is and also how thin I did it. So like there's a real balance of texture there. And then I'd gone on top with colored pencils and some near color. I really like some of these expressions as well. This was another Emma Carlyle Patreon page. This was part of her sketchbook challenge where we were creating depth. So I really tried to push back this building in the distance. This is one of my own photos when I went to the Vatican City in Rome. And I'm also really pleased with the sky. I really like that effect. It's a really nice texture. You can see how I tried to use my pencil a lot lighter to really push this into the background. Okay, I really like this spread. This became a Patreon print as well, but these were timed so I can see how loose I was being. And they were referenced from National Geographic magazines. I had started putting these little color palettes down the side of my paintings, which I still do now. And I can see how quickly I had to work because there's a lot of areas in these pieces that are really undone. Less so on the smaller ones because obviously I had less space to fill in the time. But there's a lot of energy in here and I really like the spread as a whole and like the warm reds and oranges paired with these greens. This was a reference from Moonrise Kingdom and it was quite a quick one. Again done with gouache and some coloured pencils to finish. So very simple but very stylized, obviously from the film. I did this scene twice. This was drawn from a view on Google Maps. And again, I did it once in my A4 and again in my A5. And I really enjoy working in tangent like that because when I worked out in my A5 that I did a boat here that I didn't like, I knew not to copy it into this one, if that makes sense. So sometimes doing things twice really helps, but I don't usually do that because I'm quite an impatient artist. But there's a lot of elements I really like in this one including the pink, which is where I started to use the salmon pink in my work to go against the greens and the tiny details in the buildings. This spread is full of texture. This was done with a mix of gouache and brush pens. I can see that down here in the front and trying to layer them up. I really like some of the texture in this foreground with all of the bushes. Again, this was referenced from a random pin drop that I did on Google Maps. I can see my style starting to come through here, which is really nice to see. And I also know that the way that I'd approach it now would be quite different. I don't like this spread and I can see that I have ripped a page out, which I don't often do. Um, I don't like this drawing here. It's not stylized enough for me. And this was an owl that I did on a Patreon live stream. Again, not my best 
um, I don't think it's great. And I can see that I did sketch to start with, which isn't something that I do now either. This was an experiment with acrylic paint, so there's no gouache on this page and I can tell by the thickness of the paint I've laid down. And then I've gone over the top again with some brush pen, coloured pencils, and there's that magenta and salmon pink near colour here. I was starting to include these lines on the water, which is something I still really enjoy doing. And this one feels really nice to me, I quite like the colour palette. This is a spread again from Emma Carlyle's Patreon. This was a narrative session and I remember that I drew the text and I did add on the story that I wrote for this one on top. So I'll pop a picture here of how the final piece looked when I shared it on Instagram. But these definitely look like I did it on timers, so again I can tell because it is quite messy and rough. But I really like the colours, I love the way that it starts off with the blue sky and then it obviously fades to dusk where I've added in the pink. And the stories about this boat that mysteriously appeared. I really like the blue line work as well actually, that might be something that I want to do again because I tend to pick a darker colour. Some boats, this was now in May so it's still on the daily art challenge. These were probably when I got my Ecoline brush pens because they are super juicy and bright and I can recognise some of the colours. And then I used a grey pencil and some near colours for the details on top. I don't draw boats very often but I remember that these were quite fun for me to do because they're so different to my usual nature and landscape based work. This was a reference from the Biodiversity Heritage Library Flickr which has a huge range of references on there. These are some screech owls and done with gouache and then coloured pencils and probably some neo colours on top. I really like this one, I really, it feels like it's got that sort of vintage vibe I think because of the colours and I always enjoy drawing birds. This one feels quite similar to the acrylic landscape that I did but this is done with gouache. Again I did this twice, once in my smaller sketchbook and once in my larger. I can see the pink coming through and how quickly I was trying to work because I really wanted to get a looseness in my art at this point and so I found that working to time has really helped with that. This was on Sarah Dyer's Patreon. So this was a 20 minute and a 30 minute time and I still really enjoy these. I really like the muted colour palette and I definitely didn't draw people much at that time. Um, so it was quite nice that I included it, I especially like this man here and some of the little details like the parking sign, I think that's really nice. This was also part of Sarah Dyer's Patreon, this was an exercise in 40 heads. So just trying to experiment with ways to draw people and children, stylizing the eyes and the noses and also playing around with collage which was really fun. It actually took a really long time to do this spread. A uh, spread of fish, you know how much I love painting fish, usually I do do that in my smaller A5 sketchbook. But I really love the colours here, I was starting to use my gouache a little bit more thickly and I just really like some of the patterns on here and the colours. I definitely enjoy doing these spreads, something I want to do more of. So we're almost halfway now, this was done again on Emma Carlyle's Patreon session, this was for three months had 15 minutes for this one over here and 20 minutes for this reference and then I sort of, I just merged them together into this one spread. They're not the best trees but I can see there's a lot of energy in mark making here which I really like and I like how I didn't neaten up some of these looser lines, I kept it quite organic. This was a spread, it's followed on from like my fish ones and also a butterfly spread I did in my A5 sketchbook where I just draw the same thing of lots of different types of one subject. So we've got fungi and mushrooms here and again I used my gouache as a base layer and then near colours and coloured pencils on top. This was at the point where I wasn't sketching so I felt confident enough to go straight in and put the shape down with my paintbrush. And I really like them, I actually made a print of this one which I'm still really pleased with. And then this little ribbon marks halfway so that means we are 40 pages in because I think these sketchbooks have 80 sheets. So this is the point where I've counted as halfway in this sketchbook and this was actually done after my daily art challenge so I definitely stopped creating in this sketchbook because I did feel a little bit of burnout after the year-long daily art challenge 
But I remember just coming to a reference on Emma Kalau's Patreon and just wanting to make lots of marks and just enjoy it. And so this one feels really nice to me because I think this was like where I was trying to work out of my art block. And I remember really enjoying this one. It's a mix of gouache and some pastel as well. I can feel that still coming off. I can see that in the sky. And just trying to play with the softness and the more contrasted marks and then put in the little tree house in. It doesn't really make sense with the tree in the way that it stops, but I still really like the energy in this one. And like I said, it, I remember this time. And I often find that creating art at specific moments help me remember that time a bit better. So there's definitely plenty more in this sketchbook that I could show you, but we're going to wait until I finish and then I will film a second half of the flip through for this one. But I really hope that you enjoyed watching, I hope that it's given you some inspiration and I find it really interesting being able to flip through from like this more confident mark making and creating when I had finished my daily art challenge for a whole year versus this one which I did in 2020 when I wasn't creating as much and was really unsure about my style. So thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, I would love to know which is your favourite spread down below and what you think of this sketchbook so far. I will see you next Sunday in my new YouTube video. See you later!